In this video, I will talk about attribution models and how they are applied in Google Analytics. So in an ideal world, new customers would just come to your website and make the purchase or conversion. However, in reality, most customers will make multiple interactions with your website or app for multiple times before they make the final purchase or conversion. So a touch point is a customer interaction with your website or mobile app, such as clicking a Google ad or open the link to your website from a social media content or an email promotion. Not all the touch points are equally valuable. Some are more effective, some others are not so. So an attribution model is a set of rules that determines how you can assign credits of conversions to touch points in the conversion path. So the benefits of using attribution model is to help you know what channels are effective in influencing the pipeline. And so it can help you to improve loyalty, brand equity, and overall profitability. There are different types of attribution models, and next we're going to talk about each one of them and give example. The last interaction model is one of the most popular attribution models. It attributes 100% of the conversion value to the last channel which the customer interacted before buying or converting just like this picture shows. By the way, these pictures for attribution models are given by Google, which I thought is really helpful because visually giving you what this model means. If you have one, two, three, four, five interaction happen, then the last one in this model is the most credited for. So when would you use this last interaction model? If your ads and campaigns are designed to attract people at the moment of purchase is really conversion focused rather than creating branding and awareness, then you should probably consider this model. So in other words, this model focuses on the lower layer of ADA model. ADA is a marketing model that stands for awareness, interest, desire, and action. These are the four steps that leading the customer to the eventual conversion. Another situation is that if your business is primarily transactional with the sales doesn't involve a consideration phase. The next model is the last non-direct click model. So if your last interaction is direct traffic, meaning that the customer either input the website URL directly in the browser or open the mobile app on their phones or tablet, that means the customer come from direct traffic this model doesn't count that last direct interaction. So it ignores the direct traffic and attributes 100% of the conversion value to the last channel that customer clicked through from before buying or converting. Google Analytics uses a last non-direct click attribution model in all of the core reports by default, except for the multi-channel funnel reports or the MCF reports, which I will show a screenshot in the later slides. So when is this last non-direct click model useful? It is when you just want to provide a useful benchmark to compare with results from other models, or you just want to filter out direct traffic and focus on the last marketing activity before conversion. So the next model is the last Google Ads click model. So this model attributes 100% of the conversion value to the most recent ad that the customer clicked before buying or converting. This model is useful if you want to identify and credit the Google ads that close the most conversions. So this is when you spend probably a lot of money on the Google ads. You would like to see the cost effectiveness of these ads. You pay money for the ads. You expect the ads bring in more traffic and this traffic convert more than you spend on the ads. So the next model is the first interaction model. It attributes 100% of the conversion value to the first channel which the customer interacted. So it's almost the opposite side of the last interaction model. It is useful if you run ads or campaigns to create initial awareness or branding. So in other words, you focus on the upper layer of the ADA model, which are awareness and interest. 
So you're not really focused on desire action conversion right at this moment, but you rather to create a long-term kind of uh, effect so the customer will remember your brand in a positive way, also build trust in your brand. So in the future, when the customer build needs of certain product and service that your business also provides, then it's easier to convert at that time. For example, if your brand is not very well known, you may place a premium on the keywords or channels that first expose customers to brand. The next model is the linear model. So as the picture shows, it gives equal credit to each channel interaction on the way to conversion. It is useful if your campaign are designed to maintain contact and awareness with the customer throughout the entire sales cycle. So you would consider each touch point as equally important. So the next one is the time decay model. As the picture shows, it assigns different weight to each click and the touch point based upon the time difference between each click or touch point. And of course, the most heavily credits, it's assigned to the touch points that are closer to the conversion. And the remaining ones will be less and less credit as they're further away from the time of the conversion. So you read it from the left to right, the conversions at the end of this. The time decay model has a default life of seven days, according to Google, meaning that the touch points occurring seven days prior to a conversion will receive half the credits of a touch point that occurs on the day of conversion. This exponential decay continues within your look back window, which by default is 30 days. So I didn't find Google give any specific formula to calculate the time decay model, but I did find on third parties websites, some of them suggest to use this formula, which is the credit equals to two to the power of negative x divided by seven, where x is the number of the days the touch point happened prior to the conversion and the seven is the half-life. So I will give an example a couple slides later to show you how we apply this formula. Time decay model is useful if you run one day or two day promotion campaigns that you may want to give more credits to interaction during the days of promotion. So in this case, interaction that occur one week before only have a small value versus the touch points near the conversion but you don't also not counting it at all, like the last interaction model. So you use the time decay model to count them accordingly. The last one is the position-based model. As the picture shows, it split the credit between the first and the last interaction. The common scenario is to assign 40% credit each, the first and the last interaction, and then assign 20% credit to the interactions in the middle. So in this case, if you have five interactions total, the first one would take 40%, the last one would take another 40%, and the middle, each one would be 20% divided by three. This model is useful if you most value touch points that introduce customers to your brand, so that's at the beginning, and the final touch point that result in the sales, so that's the last interaction. So in Google Analytics, we have a multi-channel funnels or MCF report under the conversions report group. So under the multi-channel funnels, there's a model comparison tool. And this tool allows you to compare up to three attribution models at the same time. So during this time period, in this example, uh, I chose last interaction, linear, and first interaction. We can see in the results that the direct traffic ranked the top on the conversions. And this is easily explainable because Google merchandise store sells Google branding kind of product. So their customers will be highly aware of the Google brands like YouTube and Android and Google. They don't have to run a lot of ads to attract the customer already know their brands. And so they come to uh, the website directly and then make the purchase right there. So that's why we can see that the conversion is the most for direct traffic throughout all three attribution models. And then the second one is the pay search. So Google Merchandise Store does run some ads and you can see that the conversion is a lot less than the direct, which is also reasonable. Like it doesn't run a lot of ads, it doesn't need to. However, for some other websites, uh, if their product or service are brand new, they pay a decent amount for the paid ads and their majority of the customer traffic come from not organic but pay search, then you will see possibly the pay search will be the top ones in the conversions. 
And the next one is the display ads, which is fewer conversions than the paid ads, which is also reasonable because display ads, we learned from the SEM that it's target on brand building and um, creating customer awareness rather than pay search is very conversion driven. Now comparing three models, we can see that the linear would assign less attribution to the direct traffic, a little bit more on the pay search and the display. And first interaction, even less for the direct traffic and even more for pay search and display, so other advertisements. So we can see that the difference between each one. And we can also see that the look back window by default is the 30 days. You can also filter by Google Ads only or all the advertisements. So let's take a look at an example. So in this case, the customer finds your website by clicking one of your Google Ads. She returns one week later by clicking over from a social network. And the same day, she comes back a third time via one of your email campaigns. And a few hours later, she returns again directly and made a purchase. We see ads and social and email and a direct four touch points, four interactions. So how does it apply credits to each one of them using the last interaction attribution model? So the last touch point in this case is the direct channel. She returns again directly and makes a purchase. So it will receive the 100% credit for the sale. Now the same situation, how does it work if using the last non-direct click attribution model? Because the last touch point is the direct, so we don't count that direct one as the last one, but we count the second to the last, which is the email campaign. So all direct traffic is ignored and 100% of the credit of the sale goes to the last channel that the customer clicked through from before converting, which is not direct traffic. In this case, is the email channel. It should come back a third time via one of your email campaigns. Next, if we're using the last Google Ads click attribution model, then you look where did you apply the Google Ads? That turns out to be the first interaction a customer finds your site by clicking one of your Google Ads. The first and only click to the Pacer channel will receive 100% of the credit for the sale. Next, what if we use the first interaction attribution model? It's the same, right? The first one is also the Google Ads, uh, in other words, paid search channel, will receive 100% credit for the sale. Next, what if you use the linear attribution model? Now, because you have four touch points, right? So each one of them in linear attribution will receive equal amount. So each one of them will be 100% divided by four, which is the number of your interactions. Then each one will receive 25% credit for the sale. The next one, it's a little bit complicated. It's a time decay attribution model. How does it work? This actually is the attribution model example given by Google. And here's their answer. In their particular sale, the direct and email channel would receive the most credit because the customer interact with them within a few hours of conversion. So they're the most closest to the conversion. So they receive the most credit. And the social would receive less credit than the direct or email channels, but still more than the pay search because the pay search interaction occurred one week earlier. This channel will receive significantly less credit. So this is Google's answer. And it's still a little bit vague, like exactly how do you quantify? So then we talk about many websites uh, mentioned about using this formula. Let's apply this and see if it's consistent with Google's answer. So using this two to the power of negative X divided by seven, seven is the half life point. And so the Google ads, which is the first interaction, the points will be two to the power of negative seven because seven days is one week before the conversion. This results in 0 0.5. The next one social, let's apply for not just one day, right? Like email and direct will be on the same day of the conversion. So one day out of the seven. So this yields 0 0.9. Because the social happened a little bit earlier than the email and direct and a little bit further away compared to the conversion point. So we assign them 1.5 compared to the seven half-life point. So then that yields 0 0.86. Now we know the credits assigned to each of the touch points. We can calculate the weight. So the weight of the Google ads will be its own credits divided by the total credits, which is all this four ads up. So then it yields 
So likely we can calculate the weight for each one of them and they add up to be 100%. It's still very consistent with what Google's answer says. So the Google Ads still attributes the least credit and email and direct they attributes most significant and equal amounts of credits because they're the closest to conversion and social it's in the middle, more closer to the value of the email and direct. So the last one is using the position-based attribution model. We talk about position attribution model counts the first and the last interaction the most significant. So usually we assign 40% credit each of the first and the last, and then the remaining 20% credit is distributed evenly. So that said, the pay search and direct will each receive 40% credit, and the social and email will each receive 20% divided by two, which is 10% credit. This is the links of the two Google support articles I based my presentation upon.